Let's go through this tutorial, Photoshop 101, uh, step by step. First thing we want to do is identify the menu bar up top. We can see here that there's a series of drop down menus for different functions. We'll primarily work right now with the file menu and the image menu. The file menu to begin with, we'll open. We've opened this file here. So we'll click open and then find your image and click that, open it up. The first step, um, in addition, let's identify the toolbar, just right here. The selection tool, cropping tools, healing tools. Then we'll find the document window. Tells us what we have open. Also tells us how big the document is. Panels. Panels are over on the right hand side. They give us different options. Primarily we'll be working with this adjustment panel. Understanding layers. Let's open up some other um, options here. Go to Window, History, which is already open up here. Um, histogram, which will give us a little uh, information about the, the distribution of color we can see here. And let's see what else we can open up right now. We can open if I, if I want. Let's keep it simple. Let's just do this right now. It's the way it is. Okay, so we have um, history, the histogram, which is this information. It's a graph. Tells us how much data is in the image. History, our operations that we do. Our color bar, which you don't necessarily need right now, but we might later. Layers, channels, paths. Primarily, we want to look at layers. First thing, and then adjustments. We're going to do all this stuff non-destructive. So first thing we want to do is create a new layer off the background. So duplicate layer, like that. So here we have this one. And now we're going to be working on this, on this layer, and we won't be harming the other one. So once we have that, you can see that a line appears here for cropping. And we'll, we'll work with that a little later on. So on here, the toolbar, um, at this moment, we really don't need anything. We want to be able to start working with levels. So we can get up here and click on this. And you'll notice it creates a whole new layer here. Layers are all about Photoshop. It's the most important thing to remember. So I'm just looking at this. We open the file. We have layers. Um, all our um, panels are open. We've made a new, made a new um, layer for levels. This is a histogram for le for levels, which con controls basically the lightness and darkness. You can correct. Notice that 255 is the lightest area right here. We don't touch this right here. We primarily, if we're going to work with this, we work with it by sliding these back and forth. However, this area here with whites is kind of tricky because it's very easy to make the whites too white and then you have no data in there. So it's too hard to control. So we tend to leave the whites the way they are. What we're looking for at this very moment is the black. Black is the resolution that gives us its, um, its strength, its richness. So the first thing we want to do is click on this eyedropper, the black eyedropper. A zero designates black, 255 designates white. So we're going to go over and typically we want to find a shadow area. So we'll go down to here. Now notice that everything kind of got dark around it, but it's a very nice resolved black. And that's so that's basically telling us that the black has been set. If we move this black other places, it will change on us. So we got to find a black that is going to give us the tone that we want, richness. And this is um, objective uh, viewing, not subjective. So we're really looking at these numbers up here. So it's set on zero, it looks good. So once we've done that, we can um, close this. So that's the first step. Apple L will give you levels as well. But this is going to work on the background. So we, anytime we want to work on the background, we go to background copy. We can go to Apple L, and that's going to give us our levels. So 
So let me just go here. There it is. So we'll go Apple L or Command. I'm sorry, Command. Um, not all keyboards have an Apple on them anymore. So Command L will give us this levels. And we can see here that it lets us also set these. But we're, we're not going to work on... Um, we're not going to work on that. We're going to stay with the non-destructive process for now. So anyway, there's the levels. That's where it is if you want to look for them. But because we use this route of going non-destructively by not hurting this background layer, we don't have to worry too much about it. It's located under Adjustments and Levels. The other thing to do um, is to use what's called Auto Tone. Auto Tone is right below the Adjustments levels. And this is going to give you a really nice set, a really nice setting for your, and that looks fantastic already. So we set our levels to non-destructive, then we did um, kind of a universal auto tone. Looks very nice. And then if we look at our histogram again, let's call that up. And we'll see. Now, if you remember the very beginning, all the information was leading all to one side in the black. Now we have a nice distribu distribution of the three colors, red, green, and blue. The yellow, cyan, and magenta signify the color printing mode. We're using RGB in this color space. All right, so that's a good start. Um, don't have to over, you know, make things too complicated for yourself, but you do need to set the levels. So I set the levels by going to the adjustment panel here and then going down and then making my adjustments. And that's, so that's on there. If I take this off, you can see what happens. So I hit the eye, it shuts it off. Turn it on and you can see what you did. So there's the beginning, right? We started here, there and there. So it looks fantastic so far. All right, so the next thing we want to do is um, we've showed you auto tone and we've showed you how to work with the, the layers, the adjustment layers. And we've talked about the histogram briefly. So let's go to curves. Let's say there's an area of his face that we want to adjust or maybe make the background a little darker up in here. So we can make this lighter and make this darker. Okay, so we're going to go back up to the adjustment layers under curves, you see it says curves. This takes a little bit of practice, but it's the best way to do this. First thing you want to do is go up this little hand, right there, click on the hand, and now you want to stay right in the center. Now this allows you to put many points, uh, mark your areas. We grab the center. Actually it lets you go up to 17. <laughs> if we raise it up, we get light. If we raise it down, we get dark. So what we're going to do is just make, we're going to work on lightening that part of his face a little bit. And that looks fine. Now the important thing on these curves is that we have to invert. So we're going to go to, um, let's see, it's the, best, it's the easiest way to get to this is just go to Command I. We've now inverted the layer. Look at the curves right here. We've now inverted them, right? In order to do this, we have to click over here to the toolbar and go to the, the brush tool. There's the brush tool. And you see here that there's a little tiny cursor. To make this cursor bigger, we can go up here and change the size. However, the easiest way to make this cursor when you're working is to use your um, bracket key, which is kind of up by the backward slash or the P. So we can change this. We can also change the opacity. So I'm going to bring this opacity down. I'm just going to just paint this area, this lightness. And you can see the difference right there. And nice. Okay, so we're doing good. we we'll lighten this up just a tiny bit, maybe. Okay, so we have to, we're done with that. Let's go ahead and make another one. Again, we create a new curved layer. We go to our hand. We bring this down a little bit make it nice vignette in the background, maybe that much. Okay, so now we go to Command I, Invert, go to our brush tool again, and this time we're gonna make the brush bigger and lo lower this again. It's really important to have 
uh, do gradual. Every time you click off, you're going to make it gradual. So there we go. Perfect. So I'm just going to darken that down so that glare isn't too harsh. Um, let's move this guy out of the way a little bit. Notice how it clicks into the panels when you do that? Okay, that's fantastic. So we got this, and that's a much better image than what we start. Let's see. Click all these off. There you go. So now we're just moving right along here. Perfect. Um, so let me get this all set. And um, I could back actually go in and lighten his face a little bit more. I'll create a new curves. So um, that one's all done. Go back to adjustments. Let's make a new curve and lighten him up even just a little bit more. Hand. Bring this up. Oh, you have to make sure you're on the... Yep, we're good. Okay. So there, I'm just going to go up here again. I want to make him a little lighter again. So I got that. Command I. Go over to your brush. And let's make him a little bit. Remember, I'm just only doing 40%. So every time I release in the mouse, it's going to make it a little bit lighter. So it looks that looks great. Okay. Alrighty, let's um, talk about color a little bit. Um, you could do it several different ways. Um, when you just when you're on your main layer here, you're not going to have access to your adjustment tool. So you have to be back on the background color. So you can see here that it gives us a color balance and it let it it'll let us shift all these um, different colors the way we, we we think we like them. But you're, we're now we're on the background layer. So that's one way to do this is to just adjust this. Um, I like color. Um, a little more natural looking that was a little warm for me so I have that setting there. That's one way to look at it. Quick easy adjustment on the background layer. It'll get you out of there really fast. Um, after we've done this we're going to crop the image which is right here. So it's the cropping tool and we could just um, let's say we wanted to crop him. I like rule of thirds so um, it's not the best composed image for sure kind of more like a almost like a vertical. Let's just pretend that that's what we want. So we double click it and then there's our crop. Again, a cropping tool lets us to move in. We could also uh, change the angle of the crop. Let's say that that line is a little crooked. We can come in and crop it by turning this here. Okay, double click it and it's cropped. Next important thing we have to do is size this image. So image size or command option I. We're going to set this for the web, right? So we're going to do a 72 PPI. And I like to have my widths very regular for the web. So it's either 800 or 900 either way. So let's go um, see what 900 does. So we have a, a 2.9 or 2.29 uh, megabyte file. So it came down from 19 to 2. So let's just make actually make this a little bit bigger, a thousand. That gives us almost three megabytes, which would be fine for the web. Um, so pixels are the size, you know, the resolution of the image. How many pixels in that um, that area, the box, width times height. So here, I only work up in here. I very rarely work on the document size. Make sure all of these are set. Scale, constrain, and resample. So we have this set at 1,000, either vertical or horizontal. Just leave it at 1,000. It'll still be fine for the web. So 72 is the, um, the web resolution. And go OK. And you'll see it shrinks. Next thing you want to do is um, I tend to make multiple uh, files. This one's going to save as um, when I go to File, and save. It's going to save it as a PST, a Photoshop file, which is um, <clears throat> which is a, a proprietary uh, file format for Photoshop. So I save this one. So I, if I want to, I can go back in and work on these original. It doesn't flatten anything. Doesn't merge the layers. But I want to make a second copy. So I'll go to Image and Duplicate. So practice copy is fine, or I can say web ready, duplicate. And so now I've made a web ready. I've checked my document size down here, it looks good. 
um, I want to um, save it. In this case, I'm going to save. Uh, yeah, save would be okay. All right. So you can see here it's a PSD. I need to change this. You either change it to JPEG or to PNG. If you're working on other programs, PNG is a good format. Um, I tend to save them for the web. If I'm just putting something on a blog, I'll just save it as. Okay. And save it. Okay, so that should be on my on my um, desktop right now. I can take and um, open up my website or my blog and put it right on there. So there you have it. <clears throat> That's the basics, um, just to get you through the first steps. All right, so file, close, and close all, and that'll be the end. Okay, hope that works for you. We've covered a lot of stuff.